Hello, I'm Dr. Tina Ray and I'm an educational and child psychologist. Today I'm going to present the 14th session in my series for teens and tweens, generally focusing on well-being, um, maintaining our mental health and keeping well and keeping going as we continue to navigate through this current COVID pandemic in this summer term. So today's focus is on emotional literacy. What is this? Um, from my perspective, it's one of the most important elements of us as human beings that we gain the skills of emotional literacy so that we can function, so we can express ourselves emotionally and interact with other people in an effective and helpful and constructive way. In a nutshell, emotional literacy is about knowing our feelings, being able to label them, understand them, and know when we're experiencing them and how to manage them. It's also about being able to empathize with others. Now, empathy is not the same as sympathy. Empathy is about being able to put yourself in someone else's shoes so that you can really feel what they're feeling. In terms of being able to manage emotions, it's being able to function, I think, even when we get a, a slight sense of stress or overwhelm, that we can actually navigate those feelings, we can process them and we can remain self-regulated. And I also think it's about repairing emotional problems, being able to problem solve when things have gone wrong, when we've got upset about something, it's being able to manage that too. Putting all of these things together, we would call this emotional interactivity. And in a nutshell, this is what I think emotional literacy is. There are five key components that most people, including the psychologist Daniel Goleman, would suggest are included under the umbrella of emotional literacy. Self-awareness, so being aware of yourself, knowing who you are, what you think, why you feel the way that you do. Self-regulation, being able to manage when we get a sense of distress or overwhelm, being able to ground ourselves back and being able to use some of those key tools and strategies from positive psychology we've talked about in the previous sessions. People who are emotionally literate are also able to motivate themselves to keep going when the going gets tough. They have an intrinsic sense of self-motivation, which is really, really important. They can empathize with other people, which is really important in terms of building and maintaining positive relationships. And they also have the social skills needed to engage with other people, to interact with them so that they can solve problems together. So that they don't get angry or upset or distressed if someone doesn't agree with them, they can work through those issues. We know about emotional arousal, okay? Most of us will know when we're getting really, really hyped up and we're getting oversensitive about something or we're just getting angry or simply distressed because something's really gone wrong. Emotional arousal though can build up over, over time. We can get this bit by bit by bit when we become really, really overwhelmed by very, very strong emotions. And this can lead sometimes to us exploding with aggression or another strong emotional reaction. We're basically overtaken by our emotions. Now, the ways in which we can actually prevent this from happening are by actually really thinking about how we manage and self-regulate. If you think about anger, for example, and this is the firework model I use a lot with children and young people, there's usually a trigger that causes us to get distressed, that really prompts us to feel quite angry. Our thoughts and feelings are really working together at this point to generate some very, very uncomfortable feelings and some very negative thoughts. And this can lead us to the body reacting. So there is that, that then, that explosion of anger where we just lose a sense of self-control, I would call it. But there are different strategies that we can then use in order to to self-regulate and gain that sense of self-control back again. We need to think about traffic lights here, stop, think, act or respond. And it's really important, emotionally literate, children, young people and adults are able to stop when they get that first bit of emotional arousal. And this then can allow them to have that time to think and process. There are different strategies that we can use 
for actually managing or finding distractions from those arousal moments. So these include mindfulness, as I've, I've spoken of before, self-soothing, grounding, and visualization. And these are all key tools that I've covered in my previous sessions, but very, very important that they are effective for some of us some of the time and for other people they're not quite so effective again we have to find what actually works for us in terms of actually managing us to really distract ourselves from some of these more overwhelming situations feelings emotions so how do we raise our level of emotional intelligence and notice i say intelligence i change from intelligence to literacy because most of the psychologists talk about intelligence to be honest i think we need to probably talk about literacy which really makes it more achievable because you get better at reading and writing over time like you get better at managing and processing and dealing with your feelings and your experiences on a daily basis over time we can do this, we can raise our level of emotional literacy or, or a quotient over time by expressing how we feel. Don't bottle it up, say how you feel, express those feelings, because if you talk about it, you're less likely to bottle it up and then get this sense of explosion when you've been overwhelmed by a strong or powerful emotion. Ask other people how they feel, what is it that they're going through? What do they feel about something? Very, very important so that you become more aware of them and their responses too. And you can understand them better if you listen to what they're saying about their feelings. If we connect our feelings to other events or situations, this is really important. I felt like that when I was in that situation. It made me very happy to be with my friends. This is something I want to experience again. Or I felt really angry or, or upset when that happened. And the reason why I need to deal with that in a better way next time is so that I don't experience those overwhelming feelings again. Think about, reflect on what you're like when you're responding to others, when you're behaving on a daily basis. Are you being over emotional? Are you responding without stopping to pause and think? Are you acting on your feelings before you think about the consequences? OK, think about the choices we make. If we're going to make that choice and it seems bad to us, then we need to look at alternatives. This is all about being emotionally literate. We need to think of other ways we can express our feelings that might be safer than lashing out at people if we're angry or upset. So the stop think, the stop pause, think and go scenario is really important here. And empathy, I think is something that all of us can develop more and more over time. It's really, really important. What really protects our mental health and well-being are good relationships, good, nurturing, compassionate relationships with other people, with our friends and members of our family. And this is a real essential in terms of protecting mental health, both now and in the future. So we need to know how to empathise with others. So spend some time just thinking about a time when someone really showed empathy to you, when you felt as though they really knew what you were feeling, they, their, their shoes were in your shoes, so to speak. What did they say? What did they do? And how did that make you feel to have that level of empathy from someone else, showing you that kindness and compassion? This is something that all of us can get better at. And this is something that's a key to positive relationships. Also, one of the keys that we can really think about, um, I think work on a bit more, all of us, is to manage our emotions more effectively, particularly those that we find more uncomfortable, more difficult to manage currently. So for some of us, you know, I think it's important, what can I do to help improve my mood, to help improve the way I respond when I'm feeling angry, when I'm sad or when I'm nervous? What key tools and strategies can I use? What thinking patterns, what scripts can I work out to use and tell myself in order to help myself calm down or manage a situation better? So when I'm angry, what strategies can I use? Am I going to use deep breathing? Am I going to challenge those thoughts that have triggered the anger? Am I going to find evidence against those thoughts so that I can show myself I don't need to feel so angry? Am I going to do some grounding, some mindfulness, some deep breathing? What strategies am I going to use? So try to think about three 
that you might use for each of those, anger, sadness, or feeling nervous. And then just some very practical ones. When would these help you? When would they help you? Talking to a friend, counting to 10. I'm absolutely certain that actually counting to 10, 20, 30, 100 in my head does help me when I'm trying to calm myself down, when I'm feeling a bit angry, I need that time to pause. Deep breathing, going for a walk, talking to your parents, carers, or a teacher, someone that is very close to you, who's got your best interests at heart. When would that help you? When you were angry, when you were nervous, when you were sad, having a nap, not dwelling on the worst case scenario, not catastrophizing the situation, doing something for someone else, taking exercise. Again, how would this help you? When would I use that strategy if I was feeling overwhelmed by my feelings? So ask yourself what you would do differently next time. And I think this is really, really important. None of us get this right all the time, which is why all of us can work harder actually managing our emotions and becoming more emotionally literate. We can all do this. We can get better at managing anger. We can get better at talking about our feelings, sharing them with others, processing them together, empathizing with others. So I think it's always about being solution focused. What would I do differently next time? What would help me to manage this better? Can I visualize myself managing this particular feeling better next time? So at this point in time, maybe it's a useful strategy to think about rating yourself for your level of emotional literacy. How do you feel on a scale of 0 to 10? 10 being absolutely excellent, 0 being very, very poor, 5 or 6 being reasonably OK, somewhere near average. OK, but where would you rate yourself in terms of how you feel you are for managing anger? processing your feelings, talking about your feelings, empathizing with others, your emotional literacy, self-regulating yourself. Where would you rate yourself now? And then think, once you've done that, about what you can do to get one step further up that particular scale. So if I'm on a seven or an eight, what is it that I can do? It may be to get to a nine, I might be thinking I need to actually manage my anger more effectively and begin to process it in a better way that's more helpful to me. So making use of specific strategies. So it's just something for you to think about at this point in the presentation. My top tips here for emotional literacy. Recognize your strengths and use them. It's really, really important it's, this is about being self-reflective, not self-obsessed, but self-reflective. Ask yourself, what's going on for me in this situation? How am I feeling? What am I thinking? What does that really mean for me? So rather than just reacting, you're going to practice responding in a thoughtful way. Very often we just quickly react to something without stopping to pause and reflect and think about it and make sure that we have a considered response. That allows us to take responsibility for our feelings and behavior. If we take responsibility, it makes life easier for everyone else and for ourselves, okay? What's really important is to remember to empathize with others around us. This is what builds those really healthy, nurturing, positive relationships. And also, of course, empathize with ourselves. No one is perfect. It's just impossible. There's no such thing as a perfect human being who's always managing their emotions successfully and managing their relationships successfully. We all get these things wrong at times. What's most important is that we learn from those mistakes. We show ourselves some compassion and kindness. So we empathize with us ourselves too. So I'm hoping that this has given you some course for thought today and you can think about what I've been saying in terms of your own levels of skills in the area of emotional literacy. Is there an area specifically that you may want to work on to get better at? Do you need, for example, to be able to express your feelings in word more? Do you need to increase your emotional vocabulary? Do you need to develop your skills of empathy or cooperation with others? Have a think, have some reflection time and if you're not sure, Talk to a trusted adult about this and see if you can work out a plan to get together to develop your skills. 
finding out what works for you is really essential. Remember, it's your toolbox of well-being and you're the person who knows exactly what you should be putting inside that toolbox. So thanks for listening again. I hope you'll join me next time.